everyone. Welcome to David Griffith's Electrodynamics. This is problem 2.29 in the book. So we are making good progress. We're finishing up this section on um, electrostatic potential fields and stuff like that, finding potentials using um, just a standard equation. And we're going to soon be moving on to some boundary conditions and work and energy and stuff like that. So that'll be fun. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let's get started on this problem. It says... To check that equation 2.29 satisfies Poisson's equation by applying the Laplacian and using an equation 1.102. So real quick, equation 2.29 is this equation we've been using throughout all these videos, which is the general form of the electric potential, at least the electrostatic potential. Um, so we have this. We've seen this a thousand times before now, if you've been watching these videos or doing these problems, right? So this is just, um, yeah, the standard form of the generalized form of the potential. So Poisson's equation um, is an equation that uh, relates the potential to the charge density. Um, so it says that the Laplacian of the potential is equal to minus rho over epsilon naught. This is essentially um, the differential form of Gauss's law. That's basically what this is, is the differential form of Gauss's law. So essentially what it wants us to do is to show that this potential, this form of the potential, satisfies this equation. So Essentially, what we need to do is we have our potential, so we need to take the Laplacian of the potential and, and check that it gives us this side over here. So let's let's go ahead and do that. So the Laplacian, if we take the Laplacian of V, our V up here, well, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, that's a constant. So let's just have that sitting out here. Then we have the Laplacian and the integral of rho of r prime over r v prime. So the Laplacian is actually a function of it's, it's a function of space. It's a, it, it's a function of all you know x y z or whatever. Um, whereas the potent uh, the charge density here is a function of r prime, not r, um, because the r prime vector is the vector pointing to each of the individual charges whereas the r vector points to the points in space where you're you know the potential can be evaluated at and, um, so this laplacian operator is not acting it's not taking any derivatives with, the, with respect to r prime it's taking derivatives with respect to r so in fact the charge density here is a it's a constant with respect to the laplacian here so can actually pull that out as well and we can actually um, move the Laplacian inside of the integral um, and so we end up with essentially this so already we're it kind of looks you know we have a factor of 4 pi down here um, but we have rho over epsilon naught which is good and so what we end up with is the Laplacian of 1 over the magnitude of the separation vector v tau like that so there's a couple relations from chapter 1 and, and some other problems I think I've I've introduced um, so there's some cool formulas to use here so the gradient so if you take the gradient of um, a function of the separation vector so this, a lot of these equations come from chapter one I'm about to show you. If you take the gradient of the separation vector, you were we were supposed to show in one of the problems that this is equal to n times that n minus one, basically the same as a derivative, and then you get the r hat vector. Um, so this is proved in um, uh, chapter one. I would suggest go finding this problem. I think it's problem 1.13. Um, one thir yeah, 1.13, I think, is where a lot of these relations come from. So in our case, so the Laplacian, real quick, the Laplacian 
is defined as the divergence of the gradient, right? And so if we have, um, like here, we can rewrite this as rho of r prime over four pi epsilon naught, the integral of the divergence of the gradient of one over r d tau, right? So first we need, we need to evaluate the gradient of one over r. And we can do that with this equation, right? And so in our case, r is minus one. So what we get is, if r is minus one, we get minus one times r to the minus one minus one, so r to the minus two. So we get minus one over r squared r hat vector. So that's what the gradient of this gives us. So then what we have to evaluate is the divergence of this. We have to calculate the divergence of the gradient of that. So the gradient of that is this, we have to calculate the divergence of this, right? So that's what it comes down to. And it is shown, I think, in problem 1.13, um, somewhere where the Dirac delta function, um, I think, yeah, some, I think where the Dirac delta function, the three-dimensional Dirac delta function pops up in the first chapter, um, it is shown that this um, is actually equivalent to, uh, so, it, it, so the derivative, or the, sorry, the divergence of r hat, script r hat divided by r squared is equal to four pi times the three-dimensional direct delta function. So we have a minus sign here, so which can come out, right? So this is equal to minus four pi times the three-dimensional direct delta function. And so plugging that into here, so this is what we plug in, since that's the, this is the Laplacian basically what we just calculated. Um, we end up with rho oops, of r prime. I was about to put the uh, vector over the charge density. And we get the integral of minus four pi times the three dimensional direct delta function, d tau. Which four pi can come out and cancel with this four pi, right? So we just get rho, minus rho over epsilon naught. Um, and then the integral over all space or all over the entire volume we're considering of the three-dimensional direct delta function d tau is one um, because essentially this three-dimensional direct delta function is zero everywhere except at the origin and so um, yeah anyways if you need to read up on the direct delta function I suggest reading chapter one um, there's a section in there that goes all through the one-dimensional direct delta function and three-dimensional direct delta function. So anyways, this integral becomes just one. <laughs> That's what it becomes. And so what we end up with is just minus rho of r prime over epsilon naught, which proves our theorem. Or, or sorry, it doesn't prove the theorem. It just satis shows us that this equation is satisfied from this potential. So, yeah, that's that's about it. It's an easy one pager proof. Um, you know, I had to use some relations here, which, you know, I could have technically derived myself, but uh, I, you know, I'm just going to use if if someone else has already figured it out, then I guess I'll use it. Um, so, yeah, if you're curious about where these equations come from, there's problem. I think you have to solve them in, in chapter one. So and figure them out yourself. So thank you guys for watching. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Don't forget, if you want to support this channel, you can subscribe to my Patreon account and you can get access to my PDF solutions from there. And yeah, uh, you, you know more information on my Patreon account. So check that out. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day.